Okay, so we've made our shapes. Now it's random, so if I run this, every time I run it, it'll be a different shape. Well, it could be the same shape, but it's random. So it's kind of nice. We've got our shapes working, but honestly, we haven't done a lot. But we can see the code, we know what we're building, and we're kind of doing the details along with it. So now we're going to try to move this. So we're going to control this game with the arrow keys. I'm going to do the left key for um, move it to the left, right key moves right. Down will move it down, it'll also be moving down on its own, we'll talk about that later. But the up arrow will rotate the figure. So basically we're just going to allow it to rotate one direction, we're not going to, if they want to rotate left, they just have to press it three times. And that's the way it's going to work. So let's um, think about that. So if we go into the shape class, we can write a public void um, move shape method, but we're going to pass in a string that will be the direction that we want to move. Okay, because basically it's going to have four or three different ways. We can't move up. That's the point. It's going left, right, or down. So we'll say if let's say they pass in, we'll first do right. If dir double equals right. Okay, how do we want to move this to the right? Well, whenever you're going to remove this shape, since there's four blocks, you're going to have to use a loop. So for int i equals zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. Now, if I want to move to the right, I want to take each shapes, each block in the shapes, their x coordinates, and move it. Oh, for you guys, yeah. So it'll be one unit to the right, which is the x. So it will do the shape, which is our blocks, i, so every block. And we'll do zero for the x coordinate, okay? And we'll just do plus plus. That'll add, that'll move it to the right. Okay, so this will move to the right. So remember the x coordinates. So when we do that, <laughs> Coordinates. Okay, so that's going to be how we move it to the right. So let's see. Um, okay, so this is the um, method move shape. It's part of shape class and it takes in one parameter which is the direction. So let's go ahead to our main function where we've got our grid and our shape. Now we're going to control with the keys. So the way you do that is key pressed. If you haven't done that before, you can do key click too. But that's like if you release the button. So what we want to do is we're going to say if key code, oh capital C key code, double equals and you put it in. I don't think you need the quotes. Let's try it without quotes. I think you don't need quotes. You do need it for the string, but you don't need it for that. If key code equals right, um, then what we'll do is we'll do shape dot move shape, and then we'll do uh, right. Make sure you do. If you're going to capitalize them in the method, you have to do them all there. Okay. So now this should work. Let's test it out. Okay, so right moves it to the right. Everything else does nothing. Okay, so your goal now is let's see if you can make it so you can make it move left and make it move down. Okay, and while you do that, I'll do it in super speed. Okay, so looks like we were successful. Hopefully you got this right. I think the hardest part on this method is getting this part, knowing that if you're gonna move it down, you're gonna change the Y. And once you start connecting that, anytime you're wanting to affect X, you, you affect it with I zero. Anytime you wanna affect Y, you affect it with I one. Um, but if you wrote the method correctly, and um, here's the other part in here, which is probably the easiest part to to get right. Um, you just basically should have your 
shape. Well, notice that it doesn't move unless you click on the screen. So if yours isn't responding, I probably should have said that earlier. It sometimes it if the mouse isn't over here, it thinks you're in the editor. It even if this is showing, it might not it might not work. So sometimes just try clicking on the screen with the cursor and then try your keys if that's not working. Sorry. Anyways, um, so now it's working except for the problem is we can't stop it from going. So now we need to work on a method that will basically check when we're at the edges. Okay, so this is the edge and that's the edge. We don't want it to go past that. So let's talk about it. So at this point, I do not want it to go left anymore. So what is the way to know when it's all the way to the left? And the answer is that if any of the x coordinates is zero, right? Or let's say less than one, just I like using less than because it can never skip it. So that'll be good. So if it's less than one, then we won't allow it to move. And same thing um, over here, we'll see if it's, if it's greater than, well, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So if, if this is ever greater than 10, right? If it's 11 or more, well, then we don't let it move any further. So what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna build in a, a Boolean inside of here. So let me just indent all of this real fast. So highlight all this code and tab it over. And we're gonna say if, we're gonna write a method called check um, side and we'll pass in the direction. So the same thing, because if it's going left, we wanna check to make sure that it's not all the way to the left if it's going right. So we wanna include the direction that we're checking because I don't care if it's on the right side if I'm moving left, that's fine. Okay, so that's that part. So now we have to write check side because it's like getting mad at me. So public vo uh, boolean, this has to return a boolean, check side and we'll pass in a string and we'll call it direction, same exact thing, okay? So this right here, this method is going to return a boolean, okay, true or false. So it has to return one of those two things. That's why I wrote public boolean. So go ahead, try to write the method that will do that. And you can use case switch if you wanna get fancy or you can just use a bunch of if statements. So once again, I'm gonna do it in hyperspeed. Okay, so it works. So the code basically, I use switch. So basically we're passing in the direction. We're gonna switch and check these three cases. If you didn't put break, by the way, if you don't use break after you're finished checking to see if it's all the way against one side or the other, then it will get stuck in there even after the case has been run. So make sure that you add that break um, at the end of each of these checks. Now remember, returning false will break this loop automatically. However, um, if it doesn't break the loop, we wanna make sure we still break and get to the return of true, understand? So if that's all working, so of course, um, left and right are pretty much the same, and down is the same, only we're checking it against 22. There's 24 rows, but we start at zero. We go to 22, the 23rd row is the bottom. We wanna make sure we're not greater than 22. And so if you run that code, it should, oh, get a click on the thing, it should move left, move right, and all the way to the bottom and stop. Of course, I can't go up, but it's working pretty good. So we've done the first part, which is just checking to make sure it works. So the last thing we need to do before we end this tutorial is just make sure we constantly have it going down. So let's write another method called public void move down. And we're gonna actually take in a parameter for the level. Okay, so the higher the level, the faster we want this to move down. So for right now, let's just talk about how we can move it down very easily. So what we're gonna do is, well, easiest thing to do is just to move shape down, right? So we already have, we already know how to move it down. Whoops, where'd I go? We, oh, meow. So we already know that move shape, if we put in parameters down, that will move it down, okay? However, if we just put that into here, into our 
draw function shape dot move down it takes into an argument so let's just put in one for just to make it go so it's just gonna go too fast you see because the, the the processing is a fast program we do not want it to just go that fast so we need to slow it down so there's a couple ways to do that one way is to use a counter so let me actually go up here to the beginning of the class and let's declare another integer and we're gonna call it counter I know I've got a ton but you remember this is a big class this is pretty much the whole game this this counter part well the other part is going to be coming but so what I can do is what am I gonna do with that counter I'm gonna use it as kind of a way of slowing it down without changing the frame rate so I don't wanna like change the program slow it down I wanna just slow down this and so an easy trick I learned I don't even remember when but is just to go and use a counter variable that's constantly counting and do um, if the counter modulus um, I don't know 10 is equal to 0 so remember modulus is checking to see if something is divisible by that number so it's the remainder when divided by 10 if that equals 0 then we'll do it and what I can do is I can just have the counter constantly counting up so check this out now it's not going as fast you see and in fact if I make this a 15 it's even slower okay so I think we're gonna end it there for this tutorial because it's already pretty long let's make it a number like 50 just for now but what you can see is that we're already writing a program that will allow us to change how fast it's going to go down and this right here this int level is going to allow me to control that because you can see as I change that number the the bigger that number the slower it gets so as the level increases we're actually going to decrease that number so it's kind of like this uh, inverse relationship so I think that's pretty good we've come a long way we've got our block moving and the next thing we're going to do is gonna really wow you so just wait till you see how the oh we're gonna do rotations next sorry rotations is actually pretty strong and then it's going to be writing this to the background which is just oh, it's gonna be exciting so see you in the next one